I am starting with the Magpie Tag Split and a Filbert brush. You guys know how much I love a Filbert brush and that's how I'm gonna start my candy cane. Now when placing these on the face, keep in mind kids' faces are tiny, so you might be able to do two candy canes, but you might not. So we'll see. I'm gonna start kind of placing this and see if I feel like I can fit two on my face. And if I can, I will. If not, we're just gonna do one. So I started with the hook of the candy cane and then I'm just angling it down, try to get it straighter. Oh, mine's not that bad. It's always hard to tell when I'm painting on the side of my face. So there's one candy cane. I could probably do another one like that, I think. We'll try it and see what happens. So I'm just picking up the white and the light gray from Magpie and this way my candy cane has an already built-in shadow so I'm going to make sure to flip my brush so that my shadow for the other one is on the inside and then of course I love a filbert because I'm creating the candy cane shape without even trying. So I don't know if you guys paint on yourself, but painting on yourself is like painting backwards and in a mirror, because <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So it's really hard sometimes. I really need a model, and Billy is kind of over me painting her, so I'm left to paint on my own. Okay, so I have two crossing candy canes right now, not too shabby. Once I add the detail, it'll look a lot better. I kind of feel like I should have done them the other way so that it felt more like a heart, you know, with these. But we'll see. Okay, so now I'm loading up a small, low Cornell, and this one is so old that the outside has, like, stripped off. And I never leave my brushes in water, but... It's just old and it's gone. I'm pretty sure it's like a number two. Definitely a low Cornell, which is my favorite round brushes. And I'm just gonna get this nicely loaded with some red and then we're going to do the red stripes. Now you can do just straight lines if you want, but I think it looks better if you do more of a kind of a teardrop um, thin to thick to thin. So I'm going to show you how I do my candy cane stripes. So starting on the tip of my brush and then I push down and up and I curve as I go. You see that? So down and up doesn't have to be perfect, so just do the best you can. But I do think if you can give it a little bit of a curve, it looks more like a three-dimensional candy cane rather than just like an icon on the face. So can you make sure you can see what I'm doing here. So starting on the tip, just outside of the candy cane, because I want it to look like wrapping around. So I start just on the outside, press down, and then wrap it around. See? Down, and then wrap it around. And now it looks like a candy cane. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other candy cane and not talk so that I can actually do it. Okay, so there's our candy cane and the stripes are almost done, but I think if I had more time, 
I would take a small brush and I would add in that second stripe that like the really nice high end, um, the good candy canes have, you know, the really thin stripe. So I'm going to add that as well. So I'm just loading up a very, very small, this is definitely a zero. It's got to be, oh, it's a one from the face painting shop. Very, very fine tipped small brush. So now I'm going to add a second layer of stripes to the candy canes to give them even more detail. This is a step you can skip if you're in a hurry. So that looks pretty good. It's definitely giving them that realistic candy cane look. And this is not that hard. So really easy to do. It'd be fun to do in different colors too. So if you do, you know, kind of the green and blue candy canes as well, that would be really, really cute. But for this, I think we're going to add in some delicate white line work and then tons of glitter so that it's very kind of um, classy and just pretty and sparkly. So let me come up with a plan and we'll get started on that part. So I think I wanna do some white ornaments around it, just lines of white ornaments and maybe some teardrops and stuff. I'm just going to play with it and see what I come up with. So hopefully it looks cool. <laughs> All right, wish me luck, here we go. I am gonna use, again, this is another low Cornell round where like the outside of it is so worn down and old, but look how perfect the bristles are. Love these brushes. This has gotta be a zero or a one also, so. And this is a different one. My other brush that I use for the red is still loaded. So this is another one in my kit. Um, and might be even smaller than the one I used for the red. So that's what I'm going to use for my detailed line work. And I'm going to get started. So doing these white ornaments is really all about brush manipulation and using your brush to your advantage. All I'm doing is using the brush and stamping it in different um, variations to create the design. So I'm not having to switch to multiple different brushes to create a tiny, you know, little itty bitty dot, a medium and a larger one. What I'm doing is simply using it, hopefully I can show this. So I'm using it to stamp a larger one, stamp a smaller one, and then again, another smaller one, and creating like a little tier. So you could use a really, really small brush to do all of this line work pretty quickly at an event. And then I'm gonna use the same brush and just little dots to create some texture on the outside of this ornament as well to get some really, really quick interest. So here we go. I'm just using the 
tip of the brush to stamp on dots. And then I think what I'll do is try to fill that in with some glitter. I want to add a few more, but I think it's looking pretty cool. I'm excited. Maybe we should do like a big one, like a big elaborate one up here. All right, I'm going to do it. And do a slightly different shape to it. And then I think I want to do those little cascading details like I did on the bottom. So you can see I'm still using the same brush. I just changed the pressure to get a larger part of the ornament. And then I'm gonna do it again. Quick, quick detail without too much effort. So if you also do henna, this will be really, really easy for you because <laughs> it's all about a very steady hand and brush control and creating intricate designs. Um, I don't do henna, but I'm a face painter, so it's still, I think, relatively easy. I had to fix that, that was bothering me. All right, so I'm gonna add detail to this top one and I'm not gonna talk while I do it, so you guys can just watch what I come up with. And then I think we'll add some drop shadows and some glitter and probably be done. So at this point, I'm wishing I would have switched to a liner brush. So I think I'm going to grab one because I really want this one to be really, really detailed. And even with this number one, my lines are getting a little too thick. Okay, so I have two different liner brushes. One is from the face painting shop and one is a low Cornell. And I've lined them up by the ferrule so you can see the difference. The face painting shop one is on top. It's much, much longer. The low Cornell one is a shorter one. The face painting shop one I use more because typically when I'm using these, I'm doing quick whimsical lines and I like how this one drags and just creates a really quick abstract line and sometimes it goes off on its own and does something that I don't expect it to do and I actually like that. But for this detail that I wanna do, this face painting shop one is gonna be too long. So I'm gonna use the low Cornell with a little bit of a shorter bristle and hopefully I can get some really good, I almost poked myself in the eye, hopefully I can get some better detail on this top ornament with this guy. Oh yeah, that is much better. I should have done that sooner, but that's okay. This is what happens when you make up a design on the spot. See, even with that one, I'm getting a pretty decent line, um, but it looks a lot cleaner than it was looking with my, my other number one brush. The liner brush is just such a fine tip that it's much better for something like this. All right, now what should I do? I think I'll do another line and then some hash marks in between it. Let's try that. It's not perfect by any means, but that's okay. Mm. 
That's kind of fun. It's very henna-y. Maybe I can manage to get some glitter in that too. We'll see. It's pretty. I like those when they look more like dots and less like lines, so... I'm gonna beef them up a little bit. And I'm painting so far on the side of my face I can hardly see it in my mirror, so... Hopefully it looks okay. And then you guys know, of course, when you're doing this on somebody else, it's a lot easier than doing it on yourself. And this would be a really, really good adult design. Be pretty on kids, but a lot of the Christmas designs, for lack of a better word, can be really cheesy. So this is a little bit more of a classy design that you could put a spin on and do on an adult or a teenager and they can still feel like they're in the festivities and having fun, but they don't have a Santa hat on their head. You know, they have something instead that's kind of pretty. So I'm going to add a few more details and then I'm going to do some drop shadows and grab the glitter. So I'm not doing this too perfectly, just trying to add a little dimension in a few places and I'm just patting it out so everything's not too flat, especially with the white. because white can tend to just disappear if you're not careful. I think I'm also going to do a little highlight on the candy canes. I forgot to do that. And go back to my very small liner brush. I do like a highlight that breaks instead of doing one solid thick highlight. I think a lot of people tend to do a, a thick solid highlight over designs and then you lose any chance of having that effect of realism. So when you're doing highlights, think about where you can break it and then pull it back in. So I did one stroke, I lifted up and did a quick little flick and then I don't want the light highlight here but then I wanna pick the highlight back up here on the curve and then I want to let it go again and then I'm going to pick it back up here and then let it go. That's enough highlight. So I'm going to do almost the same thing on the other side only a little different because it's obviously the one in front. There we go, that gives them a really nice like sheen. Might add some starburst later too, but I'm not quite sure. So now I'm gonna do some glitter and see how that works. 
This is all just a little experiment, but I like the way it's turning out. I think it is really fun. I might have to outline the candy canes in the end also, but I don't want to outline them with black, so I will think about that. Um, all right, grabbing the glitter. I'm using a chunky glitter that has some global gel mixed in, and then I'm just going to use the back of a paintbrush to place the glitter exactly where I want it. Looks pretty good. Just gonna press it in there. <laughs> All right, so I want some up here as well. I don't want to overpower this with glitter. I just want enough for a shine. So I think I'm gonna do some more Maybe here and out. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I want the glitter to be almost in a triangular shape so that it has some shape to it as well. I don't just want like a square chunk of glitter. So here you can see how I kind of peeked it out into a triangle and then I want to do the same thing on the top. So if you have to kind of push the glitter into a shape that you like, then do that. You can even scrape some off if you have to or add some like down here. so that you get more of that desired shape to it. There we go, that's better. I think mean, that's nice. I, I really don't want to overdo it. So for now I'm gonna leave it there. And then I think I'll do just a really thin black maybe brown. Maybe I'll mix black and brown together so the black's not too harsh and I'll outline or really low light the candy canes and then I'll see where we're at and then this might be done. So I made my line just like a little wonky right there on accident. Um, I don't think it's too bad, but you can see I kind of accidentally went whoop, so it's not very straight. But that's okay. This is actual face painting. It happens in real life and in practice. So I'll try to fix it a little bit, but I might not be able to correct that very well. So I'm gonna do this one as well. And when I say I'm doing more of a low light than an outline, it's because I'm not going to physically outline every single part. I'm just trying to define some of the candy cane edges so that it doesn't disappear, especially with that white. Um, it's just all too much the same value. So I want to differentiate it slightly, but not make it not go with the rest of the design. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to do the top of this one and then maybe just the top, or I should say the under part and a little bit of the top of both of these and then see how it looks. So 
So I definitely want to do it where they cross over each other because that's one of the points where they're really, really blending together. And I want to make sure they look like two different candy canes. Oh, I think it's just that angle going back on my cheek. Every time I do it, my brush wiggles. So that middle part is just a little off. Can you see that? I kind of went, shook. Try to straighten it up a little bit. I'm like holding my breath and painting this. Whew. Deep breaths. Can you see? Alright, I corrected it a little bit, but I don't want to correct it too much because I don't want to get a really, really thick line. So I'm just going to stop and accept that it is slightly flawed. So the only thing that's bothering me at this point is that there's a hole right here. This hole doesn't bother me as much because of where it's placed, but this hole does. So I can either add more white or some glitter. Oh, what should I do? If I was on the job, I would definitely do glitter. But since I am not, I think I'll do another one of these small ornaments and put glitter in it. So let's try that. Okay, I think that was the right choice. I think it looks pretty good. And I think I might be done. I'm gonna sit back and take a better look and evaluate it and see what I think. A trick I use when I'm evaluating a design that I'm creating or that I've painted is I take a picture of it. When you take a picture of it and then you look at that picture, it's almost like looking at the design through someone else's eyes. You see the layers, you see the value, you see the color and the composition in a completely different way. So I highly recommend you guys do that. That's something I still do when I'm doing a mural or an abstract painting or a realistic painting. Not only will I step back from it, but I'll take a picture and then I'll look at that picture and think to myself what's not right so I'm going to take a picture of this and take a look at it and see what I think okay so now in the photo I can really see the angles of everything and it looks pretty good now this in the photo this little hole is bothering me a little bit more than it did when I was looking at it in the camera. So I think I'll throw something in there and then I'm absolutely gonna call it a day with this entire design. But I am going to, at the very least, put maybe a couple quick starbursts in just to finish it up and make sure there aren't any holes. So I added another one down here so there weren't just clusters up in this area. I think I might do one here and then one up there as well. Any design is always about balance and my designs evolve over time as well, so they change and um, usually get better. <laughs> I think so anyway. And 
and I'm doing most of these as double starbursts, so not just four flicks, but five or six little flicks, and then a couple dots next to them as well, so everything's nice and sparkly. Okay, so I think I'm done. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Would you have done glitter instead of an ornament? Let me know what you think down below. I also hope you guys liked the structure of this video, hearing my thought process, and just watching me create a design. I had a lot of people ask me how I create designs. This is how. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know what you think. As always, like, subscribe, let me know what questions you have, what designs you guys want to see. I try really, really hard to do the designs you guys ask me to do. You asked for Christmas designs, so I'm working on coming up with more of them. So be patient with me. I'll do as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy Christmas!